in Waleska, Georgia. From Reinhardt College in Waleska, Georgia, this is Renewing American Civilization. In this, the third of ten class presentations, Congressman Newt Gingrich, an adjunct professor at Reinhardt College, will continue his course, which presents the foundational principles necessary to the renewal of American civilization. This week's lesson, Pillar 2, Personal Strength focuses on personal strength as the key pillar of American civilization and Peter Drucker's The Effective Executive as a guide to empowering citizens in the third wave information age. Let me uh, first of all welcome everybody who's here this morning and also I want to welcome the students of Mind Extension University available all over the country and I understand that there are a growing number of cable systems that are just picking us up randomly. In fact, I think we start in uh, Washington, D.C. on cable on Saturday. I want to remind you, you can mail your comments to Renewing American Civilization, P.O. Box 6008, Marietta, Georgia 30065. Or, if you're more excited, you can fax your comments to 404-528-9806. And uh, if you are on the cutting edge, you can either email your comments to America Online at renewam at aol.com uh, or you can get involved with the class transcripts and other class materials, which are available on our internet web page, http double slash www.pffp.org. Any of you who got all that, good luck. Uh, but it gives you a framework. You can also order American Civilization newspaper, video, and audio tapes and course readings by calling 1-800-2-RENEW, which is the easiest of all the instructions. So anybody who gets confused with all that other stuff, you can call 1-800-2-RENEW. Now, the course here at Reinhardt focuses on the five pillars of American civilization, which are the historic lessons of American civilization, personal strength, entrepreneurial free enterprise, the spirit of invention and discovery, and quality as defined by Deming. Each of those will take two hours, and we're dealing with uh, building sort of a framework in which to think about American civilization. Then we're going to apply the four, the, 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 these five pillars to four areas uh, towards the end of the quarter. Uh, first, to the concept of the third wave and American civilization. Second, to creating American jobs in the world economy. Third, to replacing the culture of violence and poverty with a culture of productivity and safety. And fourth, how will citizenship and community in the 21st century America, how will it operate? And our goal in these last four sessions will be to take the ideas inherent in the five pillars and then to apply them in a problem-solving mode so that people can actually deal with uh, and, and begin to see how you take the five pillars and apply them to a specific topic or a specific idea that is central to American civilization. Now, today's topic is personal strength, which I believe is the keystone of everything else. That, that is, is, we'll go through it in a little bit, if you can't come to grips with the requirement for personal strength, I think you really can't deal with the requirements of a free society. In order to talk about personal strength, I remember we talked about an analytical planning model of vision, strategies, projects, and tactics. So we're going to lay out what is our vision of personal strength, what are strategies to get personal strength, what are some projects that would implement those strategies, and then tactically every day, what do you do? Now, I'm also going to draw a contrast between the vision of personal strength that grows out of American civilization and what has happened in the last 35 years. Remember I made the point last week that you have from 1607 at Jamestown and 16, uh, 1920 in, in New England, you have up until about 1965 a, continu a continuum. And we played Franklin Delano Roosevelt's radio address to the nation on D-Day where he prayed uh, for eight and a half minutes with the American people in a way that you couldn't imagine in the modern age because my argument essentially intellectually is that between uh, 1965 and 1994 there is a discontinuity to use Alvin Toffler's, I mean to use uh, uh, Peter Drucker's phrase and that this discontinuity was an effort by a series of elite groups for a variety of reasons to replace American civilization with an alternative model 
which today is, is the multicultural, political correctness, uh, left-wing sort of vision of, of reality. And that this was a very serious, it's not a conspiracy, it is a general attitude by a wide range of people that this civilization was bad and that it had to be replaced. Now, what we're going to lay out here in part is that the model that grew up out of that, which is the model that you are surrounded by, has certain inherent values. I'm going to lay out what American civilization's definition of personal strength is and contrast it with this discontinuity's alternative model. And then what we are doing here, in a sense, uh, is we're talking about reasserting and renewing. And, and frankly, it's been in the course of teaching this three times that I began to realize that we are reasserting American civilization as well as moving to renew it. Let me give you an example. At the vision level, we would argue, I think, in American civilization that personal strength is vital, whereas the uh, elite alternative would argue that most people are victims needing help. Now, if you were trying to teach this, and we had an entire course just on this topic, you could take a week's newspaper, you could probably take this morning's newspaper, and you could go through and say, now, what happens? When we run into a problem, do we say, boy, you'd better really draw on your personal strength? Or do we say this sadly, Vic, remember the Twinkies defense? The guy who killed the, I think it was, wasn't he, didn't he kill the city council member in San Francisco? And his defense was he'd eaten too many Twinkies and therefore he was biologically unbalanced. This is not a joke. But the Menendez brothers, they were so afraid of their parents that their only legitimate response was to kill their parents. I mean, don't, you know, don't, don't ground your kids. They may kill you because after all, look how you've scared them. I mean, think about the, the defenses that will be concocted on a regular basis in America today. And then think about this test. Is the key to your future personal strength, or is the key to your future recognizing your victimization, banding together with other victims, and forcing somebody else who must have personal strength since you're now going to force them to take care of you? And uh, William Raspberry wrote a column this week where he said he saw, he saw a, a uh, documentary which said, in which Somebody said in the, in the late 1960s, I do not need to work, you need to give me money. And unless you give me enough money, you will not have, you will not have you know, fairly compensated me for my victimization. Now, let me give you a second example. If personal strength is vital, American civilization would argue that, in, that there are internal habits of strength to focus on, whereas the victimization theory would argue you need external compensation for weakness. Now, this may look like it's a simple. This is at the core of what we're going to talk about. It's also at the core of a book you'll hear me talk more and more about, which is Marvin Olasky's The Tragedy of American Compassion, which I believe is one of the most important books written in the last 30 years. Olasky's argument is that to help the poor, you have to have a transformational experience which strengthens their internal habits of strength. Whereas the modern welfare state basically says to you, tell us what kind of a victim you are, and we'll tell you how big a check you get. 